recently, on my channel, I focused a lot of my content on exploring the strange parts of YouTube, sometimes taking a look at a mysterious video or diving into strange genres and large pieces of the platform as a whole. In these videos, I often talk about the quote-unquote dark side of YouTube and other disturbing videos on the platform. But what exactly is that dark side and what are the disturbing videos? Today, we will be taking a look at the disturbing YouTube iceberg, a collection of disturbing videos and channels on YouTube starting off with the more tame and slowly delving into the more disturbing pieces at the bottom of the iceberg. If you are as interested as I am in this darker side of YouTube, then this is the video for you. This iceberg in particular has been months in the making, touching on things I might not be able to cover in a full video. However, before we begin, I'd like to first give my thanks to these two icebergs already made on the strange side of YouTube for helping me come up with some ideas and introducing me to some topics I didn't even know about. Links to both of those will be down in the description. With that being said, let's dive into the disturbing YouTube iceberg. Elsagate. I'll start off with not a single video, but a phenomenon that YouTube is still struggling to control. In late 2016, a strange phenomenon started to gain popularity on YouTube. With the rise of children-tailored content on the platform, something strange grew alongside it. Videos with kid-friendly titles and thumbnails to get kids to click on it that would slowly devolve into a much more creepy and unsettling video, sometimes depicting real-life gore as well. This became known as Elsagate, due to the character being a popular thumbnail in these types of videos. Elsa referring to one of the main characters in Disney's Frozen, the phenomenon came to light in mid-2017, when many of the videos were found to have disturbing aspects to them. YouTube has struggled to subdue the rising concern of Elsagate content, especially as this content finds its way onto their YouTube Kids platform. Don't hug me, I'm scared. While the intent behind Elsagate content might still be up in the air, the web series Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared was always intended to be disturbing. A collaboration between Becky Sloan and Joseph Pelling, these videos would start as seemingly innocent Sesame Street style episodes, featuring puppets in mundane situations. They would eventually devolve into chaos by their end, with violent imagery and existential horror. The disjointed style made the series go viral, stretching it to eight episodes and cementing its place at the top of the disturbing YouTube iceberg. Salad Fingers, where the format of Don't Hug Me I'm Scared would usually start innocent and then delve into chaos, Salad Fingers was a psychological horror animation created in 2004, before YouTube was even around. However, it gained much of its popularity after transitioning to YouTube in 2007. The videos had a distinctly unsettling quality to them, including the design and distorted voice of its main character, Salad Fingers. In the series, the main character and his only friends, his finger puppets, exist in a desolate world. The plot usually takes the viewer through disturbing aspects of Salad Fingers' life, depicting him doing everything from walking into bear traps to rubbing rusty objects together. The series has gained cartoonist David Firth a cult following, and Salad Fingers remains one of the most recognizable videos in YouTube's history. A Walter. Sometimes, however, a joke or something intended to disturb goes over people's heads and becomes more than itself. 15-year-old Caleb Berg of Wasu, Wisconsin had gone missing in August of 2009. Developments were slow until a mix between Reddit and Imgur speculation brought up a video posted in 2009. In it, a man greets his friend saying, Hey Walter. I got a new girlfriend today. He describes the things they did together, only to cut to him showing a kidnapped girl chained in a bathroom begging for help. Theories rose that the girl in the video may very well have been Kayla Berg. Some were skeptical, until the Antigo Police Department decided to investigate. 
it didn't take long for them to confirm that the video was simply a dark joke, as many suspected. The poster apologized, and the video has since been removed. Promo Bots The line between what's real and what's not is nowhere clearer than in the comment section of bigger videos, where promo bots masquerading as real people collect. I did a whole video on the increasing concern about these bots, from their use in promoting scams to swaying public opinion. While they can usually be identified by their homogeneous comments, there is concern that over time they're getting more and more convincing. Kate Yup At the boundary of what's real, I still find myself intrigued by one channel. A woman going by the name of Kate Yup started posting mukbangs in 2018. Yup never showed more than the lower portion of her face, but as she continued posting, viewers believed that they were seeing signs of abuse, such as bruising on her arms. This paired with the fact that a male can be heard making demands in the background as Yup eats led to many believing that she was a kidnapping victim. Yup would intermittently respond to these claims in the comments, yet certain annotations that seemed to stress the words help and SOS kept the conspiracy alive. Yup posted her last video in 2019, and the mystery, if there even is one, remains unsolved. Blank Room Soup Another unsolved mystery regards the context and origin of Blank Room Soup. It refers to a disturbing video that has been consistently re-uploaded over the years. Depicting a crying shirtless man with an oversized spoon, the video is made even more unsettling by the large, uncanny masked figures looming over him. The video was suggested to be a segment of a snuff film pulled from the most depraved parts of the internet but numerous attempts to determine its exact origin have failed. Rainbot did a great deep dive looking at the origins of the suits, and it turns out there is a much deeper mystery behind who posted the video and why they did so. Username 666 I now turn to quickly recapping some videos where they were either intentionally posted to be disturbing, usually as entertainment, or where the mystery behind them has been resolved. Username 666 is an example of a disturbing video creepypasta, showing what happens when you search for the user 666, the person refreshes the page multiple times, with each refresh generating an increasingly grotesque page. Thumbnails disappear, then the web page goes dark, and then unsettling gory images take over the screen as sounds and clips of a drowning woman starts to play. The video was the subject of tons of myth-making, but has since been confirmed to have been made for artistic purposes. WebDriver Torso WebDriver Torso is a bizarre channel that uploaded hundreds of thousands of short clips, usually no longer than 11 seconds. Slides of red and blue shapes alternate as beeping noise is heard in the background. With some joking references to the conspiracy, it drummed found across the platform and on Google. However, the channel has been confirmed to be an automated test account managed by YouTube. Smile HD Smile HD was a music video parody of My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. It depicts Pinkie Pie running through a field to her friends, only to kill each of them in graphic ways. The original has been removed, but continues to be re-uploaded every now and then. Local 58 Local 58 TV was a channel that uploaded a series of videos to YouTube as part of a horror anthology created by Chris Straub. Episodes are presented as being part of a television channel in Mason County, West Virginia. Interspersed between ad breaks and regular programming, the broadcast becomes increasingly disrupted with surreal messages, imagery, and audio distortion. The series remains a great example of analog horror, where its effectiveness relies on conveying a sense of realism through digital presentation. Petscop Speaking of analog horror makes for a great transition into talking about Petscop. Taking the form of a Let's Play style narration over gameplay, the 24 episodes follow a man named Paul as he plays a fictional PlayStation game. The story becomes increasingly disturbing 
largely thanks to the format purposely feeling like something you could realistically stumble on while searching YouTube. Poppy, one of the best examples of someone identifying the disturbing element of YouTube and using its effect was Mariah Rose Pereira, otherwise known as Poppy. Her calm but disconcerting videos started in 2014, where she presented as an android-type character, speaking in a childlike voice with stiff body language. The videos eventually got enough traction for the Poppy character to sign a record deal, and her persona continues to stand out as a unique in the music industry. 11BX1371 11BX, known by most as the Plague Doctor video, revolves around a video that was submitted to a Swedish tech blog. The eerie black and white video depicts someone in a Plague Doctor costume in an abandoned warehouse building. A deeper look revealed various hidden messages, and that the video had actually been uploaded to YouTube under a different title months before the tech blog published it. For more information on the mystery and the solving of the Plague Doctor video, I did a deep dive on it about a year ago. The Backrooms The internet's interest in liminal spaces can be seen in the backroom's popularity on YouTube. Liminal spaces convey something uncanny, usually in the form of images of places like malls and schools devoid of people. The backrooms are apparently where people end up when they fall out of reality looking like a maze of beige carpets and fluorescent lights. YouTube videos have helped kept the creepypasta alive, as well as expanding the lore behind it. Taking a step down into the next layer of the iceberg is where things will start to get a little bit more disturbing. Happy Anniversary In 2012, a user named 112Dirtbag posted a disturbing video. A man sits in a dark room laughing before the video cuts to the words, Happy Anniversary. Various aspects of the video seem to point to the man being involved in the disappearance of Maura Murray. Murray, a 21-year-old nursing student at the time of her disappearance in 2004, contacted her university and said she needed a week off, claiming it was due to a death in the family. Not long after, Murray crashed her car along Route 112 in New Hampshire. A person came to assist only for Murray to act erratically before disappearing almost without a trace. The strange conditions of her disappearance have kept the cold case in the public imagination, with many believing foul play was involved. The posting of the video seemed to confirm this in many people's eyes. Not only does the dirtbag and the person's username connect to an interview where Murray's father calls those who might be involved dirtbags, but the 112 also matches the highway where she crashed. In addition, the video was posted exactly eight years after the night of her disappearance. Pollock Cycle Pollock Cycle is a channel with hundreds of videos posted via YouTube Shorts. The titles are always three seemingly random words, and the videos are made up of various stills of bright, psychedelic imagery. What stands out most is each video has its own short tone, typically high-pitched and slightly distorted. The channel stopped uploading seven years ago, but since everything is still up, I'd love to hear some potential theories about what its purpose might have been. Gemini Home Entertainment Incredibly similar to Local 58, but arguably more disturbing in presentation, is Gemini Home Entertainment. Created by Remy Adobe, the series of videos present themselves as micro-documentaries on various topics listed under the fictional Gemini Home Entertainment Video Company. The topics they cover range from the deep ocean to wilderness safety. The videos tend to start off seemingly benign, with a distinctly retro 80s-90s presentation, only to eventually become increasingly distressing in their content. The overarching plot of the videos points to an alien invasion well underway, and they're incredibly well made. Dot search slash the string. A few months ago, I looked extensively at a strange phenomenon that happens with YouTube's search function. Using special characters, particularly a specific string, 
brings up a wild west of creepypasta shock videos and disturbing content. I raised multiple theories as to what was happening, including that it was connected to Elsagate or that it was simply low effort memes in foreign languages that become especially more disturbing when devoid of any context. Regardless, my experiences going down that rabbit hole left me very uncomfortable and I recommend watching the full video to get an idea as to why. Body of a Pig In 2007, a person named Devin Raymond posted a video of him and a group of people ghost hunting. The video was posted with an ominous description, with Raymond saying he was limited in what he could legally reveal about the clip. The clip then shows what is presented to be a real EVP, or electronic voice phenomena, where a deep voice can be heard to clearly say, quote, I have the body of a pig. The group then push a camera down a hole with the flash capturing a image of a ghostly monster. The video was portrayed as real, but has since been pretty much debunked. Scare Theater has an excellent video going into what made the video so uncomfortable to watch, as well as what led him to conclude that it was fake. The Slamming Door The slamming door posted by a user with the same name is presented as a documentation of a Polish man who believes his house to be haunted by a malevolent spirit. This particular video comes in a long line of them. After hearing knocks on the door to the room he is recording, things quickly escalate. The man seems genuinely fearful as objects can be seen to be thrown around him with no apparent source. Although he no longer uploads and the videos are likely fake, his channel is still up at the time of this video's recording. Some of them are pretty convincing. Dad. This refers to the channel name and main character of the channel, Dad. In it, a stereotypical, mild-mannered father figure is presented in various skits. The videos mainly consist of the character doing strange acts, everything from spying on other families to narrating the sadness of the character's life. Even though they are skits, they still have an unnerving feeling to them. Dad's videos seem to mostly touch on a family fallout in the early days of the channel, but has since branched out to everything from YouTube commentaries to even gaming. Dad has even openly engaged with the various YouTube mystery channels that did videos on him, and the overarching theme of his videos seem to be bizarre satire of social media and contemporary society. Whatever the meaning of the videos, Dad is a fascinating and sometimes uncomfortable channel to watch. Moving down a step further in the iceberg, we start to get into some interesting YouTube finds, many of which still remain unsolved today, adding to the disturbing aspect. Unfavorable Semicircle A year after Webdriver Torso caught attention, a channel named Unfavorable Semicircle started posting, and it posted a lot. The videos mostly consisted of bizarre images and high-pitched audio, ranging anywhere from a few seconds to hours in length. Across the over 84,000 videos the channel posted, there was lots of diversity in the types of images and audio tones shown. As the high volume of uploads continued, people started raising theories, suggesting it to be a test channel like Webdriver Torso to an ARG or even a number station. None of these were ever confirmed, and the channel ended up being suspended in 2016 by YouTube. For a further look at Unfavorable Semicircle, multiple archives of the videos are still hosted on YouTube, and I actually did a deep dive on the topic in my first video, exploring potential theories. It is still one of my favorite mysteries, so if you want to check it out, I will be leaving a link on screen now. Grave Robbing for Morons an internet legend, Grave Robbing for Morons was a VHS that had been circulating around since the 1990s, eventually finding its way onto YouTube. In the video, a young man with a stutter holds a skull in his hand, while explaining in oftentimes graphic detail how to loot graves for human bodies and sell human remains on the black market. Although not much necessarily disturbing is shown on screen, the video has led to decades of speculation on whether the video is a real guide 
on a morbid criminal activity. A lot of focus on the research has been directed to the skull the young man holds in the video, with many saying if it's a prop, it's a terribly convincing one. Others point to the fact that the film might have been a low-budget student film, but nobody has ever come forward and claimed involvement. Others focus on the fact that the man's statements are wholly inaccurate and sometimes inconsistent throughout the video. As of 2022, the video status remains unsolved. The Smiling Man The Smiling Man refers to two short films uploaded to YouTube. The first, by blue underscore title, was animated, and the second, more viewed one, is live action. The story between the two are almost identical, showing a person walking late at night only to see a strange, smiling man on the street. Things quickly go from disturbing to dangerous as the smiling man gives chase. These videos, although fictional, are a great example of the disturbing effect of the uncanny. Instances where our fight or flight response becomes confused, and we don't know if something is entirely threatening or not. This type of story has been around for much longer than YouTube, with one of the most famous versions describing a man dubbed Indrid Cold. In the mid to late 1960s, West Virginian locals would describe a tall man with slick back hair and a suit standing alone in the night, grinning, before running and chasing people. Indrid Cold now exists as an urban legend, with many insistent that he was some kind of shape-shifting alien. These YouTube videos do a great job at adapting the same. A disturbing story of a figure in the dark, standing, smiling, only to start running after you. Alan Tutorial Alan Tutorial refers to a series of videos by a man named Alan, in the same vein as other popular educational videos on the platform. In it, Alan is presented as a mentally disturbed person publishing videos on useless tutorials, such as how to fill a box with dirt. In some of his later videos, strange things start happening, and Alan flees to the wilderness, still uploading videos, only to eventually be taken captive by an unknown group. Alan Tutorial as a channel got some traction. At the start, most of the videos were shared to mock the mundane, often poorly planned approaches he had. As the videos went along and Alan's mental state seemed to deteriorate, the videos became increasingly eerie. However, it also became obvious that the videos were creative in nature, with the author, Alan Resnick, playing a fictionalized version of himself. Still, some of the content is uncomfortable to watch, even knowing it's not real, and the larger lore behind the Alan tutorial story is still discussed today. Poochie and Pansy Poochie and Pansy was a crudely drawn web series about two puppies uploaded to YouTube. The two find themselves in an adventure to save a kitten from an evil witch, but by the end of the first video, the child-friendly presentation suddenly gives way for something more disturbing. As the two talk at the entrance of a cave in part one, a hyper-realistic skull with one eye appears on screen. This would set the precedent for Poochie and Pansy, and people took interest with how, despite the seemingly innocent video's representation, the videos were filled with disturbing and cryptic imagery. Some viewers were certain that there was a hidden message running throughout each of the videos. Turns out, they were correct, but the point of the videos was relatively innocent. The story of the two puppies saving a kitten from an evil witch was a recruitment challenge for an ARG called The Hunt for Ganga Diddle. Although the mystery was finally solved, Poochie and Pansy have cemented themselves in the deeper side of YouTube's disturbing lore. Camera Heads Camera Heads is a bizarre one, a creepypasta with a genuine mystery attached to it. First posted to the paranormal board on 4chan in 2009, the story describes a person finding an envelope on a stack of rocks on their walk home. Within the envelope were cryptic messages making claims like, I killed a camera head, or it took Trevor, or get help if I don't come back. The person finds a cassette nearby, extracting its contents and uploading it to YouTube. The strained camera heads are described in countless ways, 
but always with a vague, threatening quality to them. Sometimes appearing human, they are believed to be anything but. Creatures are robots with cameras installed in their eyes. These creatures' intent seem to be surveillance. Told through different mediums, the story saw the original poster describe their slow descent into madness, becoming increasingly paranoid that the camera heads were after them. The interesting part about camera heads is not so much its content, but perhaps more so its status as a piece of lost media. When the Paranormal Boards wiki was shut down, it seemed all original archives of the camera head story was lost. Various 4chan users posted about trying to find the original thread in 2014, which led to a small community surrounding. Developments were slow until a 4chan user discovered a 2009 video uploaded to YouTube titled Camera Head. There are various similarities to the original video, from the context of finding a mini DVD near a goalie to the date posted. The video ends with what seems to be a masked figure moving into frame. As of 2022, it's still not confirmed if this video was in fact connected to the original creepypasta. And camera head's disturbing appeal is still fueled by the hunt for the archive story. Look at the clown. This refers to a video titled Look at the Clown, a child therapy program. Running at around three minutes long, the context is that it's supposedly an experimental treatment recommended to a man to help his son overcome his fear of clowns. In it, images of clowns and carnivals play to circus music as the phrase, look at the clown repeats, over and over again. Eventually, the video starts showing increasingly disturbing images of evil clowns, up until the end where it shows pictures of John Wayne Gacy, infamous for working as a clown at parties as his serial killing spree was active. The video's intent was likely as nothing more than a crude shock video, but it remains disturbing all the same. Iceberg Part 4 Man relates to his out-of-body experience. This particular video stands out from others on this list in that it didn't seem to be an intentionally scary video. The video that was hosted on the creator's channel for quite some time depicts a man singing an upbeat song about what he saw after being pronounced dead from a heart attack and then coming back to life. Although the video is mostly upbeat, the lyrics of the song, when given a close listen, tell a strange story. From communicating to angels to no longer fearing death, the entire piece becomes much more eerie with the contrast between the happy sounding song and the true nature of the lyrics at play. Limbo the organized mind. When you think of the work of legendary puppeteer Jim Henson, you'd be forgiven if your mind immediately goes to the family friend Muppets. However, Henson was known to push against the belief that puppets were only for children's entertainment and wanted to use them as a form of artistry above all else. Although his work on Sesame Street is what skyrocketed his success and led to the creation of the Muppets, he made many attempts throughout his career to touch on darker subject matters. This is evident in films like The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, but often forgotten example is The Organized Mind. In it, a character named Limbo, most easily described as a mouth and two eyes, recedes into his own mind while narrating with a calm voice. The imagery is strangely disconnecting and now available on YouTube for those who'd like to watch it. Interestingly enough, I found through some further digging that this wasn't Limbo's only appearance. A very similar character hosted the countdown sequences in the early days of Sesame Street, making the connection that much stranger. The Peanut Vendor, 1993. Long before Jim Henson's work on projects like Sesame Street, The Muppets, and of course, The Organized Mind, there was The Peanut Vendor. Footage of the full short has only surfaced within the last few years, and it toes the line between nightmare fuel and incredibly impressive. Following a monkey as he sings about selling his peanuts, the film stands out for how convincingly the stop motion effect has aged. Of course, that's if you can get past the downright horrifying appearance of the lead character. Although the video was originally made in 1933 as an early animation to cheer kids up, 
it seems much more disturbing when looked at today. Driving through a burning forest. The increased use of dash cams have brought a wealth of content to YouTube, both disturbing and not. One example that's particularly difficult to watch was taken from a driver as they drove through Napa County during one of many Californian wildfires in 2020. The driver is silent for most of the video, but the immense destruction on display speaks for itself. It's an on-the-ground confrontation with the effects of global warming and the amount of devastation shown is shocking. Smile Guide A Polish channel called Krena Grizzly Bow TV would upload videos at an average of one a year, and with every new upload, grab interest for its disturbing, contextless content. Videos like how to effectively apple, how to make from paper, and etc. would devolve into surrealism and theories ran wild about what their intent was. The videos are part of a series by Wichter Strebog, creating an artistic universe where Smile Guide is at its core. The main character, a young girl, hosts the fictional program Smile Guide alongside her scroll companion, Malgosia, who sometimes transforms into a devilish alter ego. Mushrooms form a crucial theme across the series, and much of the deeper plot, or lack thereof, is intentionally left vague and up to the viewer's interpretation. The videos became especially popular since captions were available in various different languages, but clues to the real context were intentionally left obscured. Strebog, the creator, intentionally did not credit the actors until the very last episode. His intention was to emulate both creepypastas, memes, and viral videos, specifically to create an art piece which in his words, plays with the recipient's predictions and destroys them. I recommend watching them with the original mindset, keeping in mind until April 2017, there was very little context given to the annual uploads. Station992.mkv If you search up Station992.mkv on YouTube, you'll get two strange creepypasta videos, but both are connected to Russia. The first, most popular version will take you to various clips of what's been dubbed the Russian Slenderman, a tall creature with a featureless face that in some of the clips extends its limbs and starts climbing up a building. The more disturbing version of the Station 992.mkv title takes you to a video called The Train of Death. The video shows grainy footage of the outside of a train, only to then go inside showing what looks like real corpses lying in the compartments. It's incredibly hard to make anything out in the video, and I couldn't find any real story behind it. I did note the inconsistencies in the video and that the exterior shows a short diesel train, and the interior shots show a subway. Wherever the original video footage comes from, I couldn't find. As far as where this footage originated from, and why it still consistently gets uploaded to YouTube, the only clue I have to go on is that it's part of a Russian creepypasta, where the video apparently curses anyone who watches it. If you want to take the risk, I'd love to have some people search it up and see if they can figure out anything about it. Polybius Gameplay Polybius refers to both an urban legend and the 1981 arcade game The Legend Surrounds. The myth suggests that a mysterious arcade machine started appearing around Portland, Oregon in the 80s, and it seems the story has been shared since at least the year 2000. Apparently, the machines would often be visited by government agents to collect data. Players, on the other hand, would experience various psychoactive symptoms during and after gameplay, including amnesia, insomnia, and hallucinations. Just as suddenly as the game appeared, the machines went missing. Various clips claiming to be real gameplay from Polybius have sprung up on YouTube, often with a retro aesthetic and flashing psychedelic imagery. These clips and the context behind them often have people commenting saying that they feel uncomfortable or distressed. It's more likely that the sensory overload is what's causing these feelings. But two decades in, the myth of Polybius lives on. SNCH SNCH refers to a series of videos uploaded to YouTube. These videos 
better described as clips, since they rarely run more than 15 seconds long, portray three friends as they hang out with one another. The titles are often random key mashes, the clips, at least at the start, seem to be mundane snapshots of the three going about their business. Gradually, the content gets more disturbing, such as when a baby monitor is activated in another room and a strange figure is caught standing outside the window. Even if the videos are fictional, whoever created them has never come forward and spoken at length about their intent, which is a shame because the overarching storyline happens to be pretty well executed. Iceberg Part 5 The Final Layer Now before we get into the deepest and darkest layer of this iceberg, I would like to say that some of the contents of this layer could be disturbing to certain viewers, as many of these topics pertain to videos linked to real life events, and even criminal cases. With that being said, let's take a look at the final layer. Hidden and Unlisted Hidden and Unlisted refers to the mass amounts of videos that are gore-related or go against YouTube's policy, but don't get reported because of the nature of them, not showing up in search results. On YouTube, an unlisted video means that it is not available to be found through search or channel pages, with the only real way of finding it being if the uploader share the link directly. If done in a certain way, YouTube could be used as a hosting service for videos that you would never think could exist on the platform, only being shown to those who the uploader knows wouldn't report it. A few examples of these strange unlisted videos that I found come from a website a viewer sent me, excitementfunzone.xyz. They are confusing, eerie, and strange at the same time, and there might even be a larger mystery at play here. Of course, there are more disturbing finds in Unlisted, but I will not be going over those here. Monkey Torture Monkey Torture doesn't refer to just one video on YouTube, but rather a full subgenre that is quite disturbing. There has been a small niche, if you aren't familiar with it already, there is actually a whole community of watchers and creators of Monkey Torture on YouTube. The reasoning behind them seems to simply stem from a cruel desire to watch videos like these. There is everything from playlists, discords, and subreddits dedicated to this strange genre. The large issue behind it seems to be the fact that these videos survive and remain up for an extended period of time without being removed, despite the fact that they are so notorious. Fake Animal Rescues Fake Animal Rescues refers to another genre on YouTube, similar to the monkey torture one, but different in a couple of ways that make it possibly even more disturbing. There is a genre on YouTube that portrays a dog or other small pet being taken care of and nursed back up to health after supposedly suffering an attack from a different animal. However, these innocent seeming videos have a dark side to them. While many of the videos in this genre are actual rescues, the opportunity for a real rescue to be caught on film only comes so often so people started to find other ways to make them. Due to the large amount of views these videos pulled in, some creators started purposely inflicting damage upon an animal to then pull their camera out and pretend to rescue it. In a study, World Animal Protection found 180 different fake animal rescue videos published on YouTube between 2018 and 2021. And due to the nature of these videos, many still remain up as it is difficult to differentiate between which ones are real and fake. If you'd like to learn more about the subject, Nick Crowley did a great video covering it and the genre overall. Blackie.avi Blackie is a strange one. It started essentially as a creepypasta, but the story goes that a user received a message from a random user on Skype by the name Blackie. After sending a few messages back and forth, the Black E user started counting down from three. When they hit one, they received a message from him stating, download started, and a video was downloaded to the user's computer. Although this creepypasta is long said to be fake, the supposed video that was uploaded to YouTube depicts jump cuts between hollowed out faces and corrupted computer screens. The audio for the piece is distorted and cuts in and out, adding another layer to its already strange nature. 
Illusion of Bias Illusion of Bias is probably one of the best horror pieces I've ever seen. The video starts off with black and white photos of rainy images, with a strange soundtrack and thunder sounds playing behind it. The pictures are slowly panned over while text appears on screen, talking to the viewer about their own insecurities. The video slowly tells the story of a woman who suffered from a botched surgery and went on to lose her own perception. She lost the ability to see her own face, however, everyone else could. The video gets more eerie and eerie with time until eventually the woman is able to see her own face, which is quite a disturbing reveal. Plasma Master Dawn Plasma Master Dawn refers to a disturbing channel, more so for the context behind the creator than the videos themselves. On the surface, they were just a wholesome covers channel, performed by Donzel Owens Jr. of songs like Canon Gray's Heather. In December of 2020, Nick Crowley made a video about a theory that had been posted on the subreddit r slash morbid reality, suggesting that Donzel Owens Jr. was a registered sex offender. The video titled YouTube's Hidden Predator soon motivated people to concrete proof that Plasma Master Don was in fact the same person who had inappropriately touched a young boy. Various links came to light, including shared birthdays, the same make of car, and even the shirt being worn in the registered sex offender's mugshot, as in Plasma Master Don's videos. About three months after the original Morbid Reality post, and only ten days after Nick Crowley's video was uploaded, Plasma Master Don passed away. His channel is still on the platform at the time of recording. Mr. Sleepy People Mr. Sleepy People is one of the most disturbing in this iceberg. Although the channel is now deleted, when active, it posted some very strange videos. In the videos, the individual behind the camera would sneak into women's rooms that were sleeping and repeatedly open up their eyes and film the process. The videos flew under the radar for a while, but when they started to get discovered, a back catalog of almost 40 videos and 10 different women being filmed was unveiled. This is obviously creepy as is, but it's even more unsettling when you realize that this sparked an entire community of others to do the same thing. CE colon 444565. This one refers to a video with the title CE colon 444565, and it is quite disturbing for a couple reasons. At first glance, the video depicts strange black and white images that contain satanic imagery and many hidden artifacts on closer inspection. Strange faces, ghosts in the background, and more. Just about every image has something more to it than initially meets the eye. A man can be heard talking throughout the video, giving a speech on a doomsday event. The man urges listeners to quote unquote leave with us, as it is their only chance to survive. While creepy devoid of context, when you realize that the speech being played was actually made by the leader of the Heaven's Gate cult before its members committed suicide, it becomes much, much more disturbing. Mr. Anime Mr. Anime is a quite disturbing piece of history that haunts over the early days of YouTube. Mr. Anime, also known as Trey Sessler, was a YouTuber who started off on the platform all the way back in 2006 uploading reviews for various animes. However, this is not what he would end up being known for. In February of 2012, Mr. Anime announced to his audience that he was going to take a two to three week break from YouTube to reward himself. At the end of the break, however, he stated in another video that he had found a new job that may prevent him from uploading. Just a couple of weeks later, however, Trey would kill his mother, father, and brother at their home. His original plan was to commit mass murder at the local high school down the street, and killing his family was his way of quote-unquote saving them from the pain of him doing this horrendous act. Trey would end up not going through with his plans at the school and returned home to be arrested shortly after for the murder of his family. Before this, Mr. Anime was deeply tied to the anime community on YouTube, and had amassed a small following of his own. He was eventually sentenced to life in prison for his crimes, and his channel was terminated on YouTube 
in late 2020 following the sentencing. And that is the end of the disturbing YouTube iceberg. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one, as it took quite a bit of time to organize and find all of these topics. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel or leaving a like. If you enjoy the content, ringing the bell would also help out a lot. Thanks again for making it all the way to the end of the video, and have a good night.